the cycle will continue. Person, each of us in this room will face the question whether there will be a day when the In this room, we have to pay respect to our forefathers, those here whose nations spend decades and whose experience some stuff. Through them is the way forward. A marvel of Eternian industry, the hand-powered can crusher. This special piece of equipment has vastly increased the speed at which aluminum is processed in the Empire. But under the extreme pressures of ever-expanding industry, overuse has left our poor can crusher crushed itself. Its rim is bent, and this warp is causing cans to get stuck in the press, slowing down production and further damaging it. Something has to be done! We start by trying to hammer the press back into shape, but small taps aren't cutting it, so we have to get more aggressive. Unfortunately, that works a little too well, and breaks the frame apart. The weak ring joints just gave out, so I decided to take it apart and see if we can't make the whole press more sturdy. So we take it back to the workshop and start out by flattening that top plate out like we wanted to. Next, we're going to take out that wooden extension we put on the bottom and repurpose it as an extra support to make sure our top plate stays flat. I want to add these wood blocks on both sides to protect our thin metal plates, and also to give a softer, thicker material to grip and crush the cans. But in order to do that, I have to drill these air holes in the top crushing block to ensure that we let air escape the can when it's crushed. So once we have that, we move on to installation. To give our screws some extra grip against the metal, we're going to recycle some plastic sheets here and add them to the opposite side. When screwing into materials like wood, always make sure to pre-drill your holes so you can avoid splitting. Normally, you would do that for plastic as well, but since the sheets are so thin, we can just go ahead and screw right in. And can't forget about that air hole. Now that looks like a sturdy top plate. Next we can go ahead and do the bottom plate. This one will be used to add some extra grip to the bottom of the can when crushing, and closes the gap a little bit, giving us smaller, more uniformly compressed cans. Then we just finish up the same way we did the top, adding our screws and filing down the excess. Once we have both top plates, we can go ahead and try out our new upgrade. Alright, now we're racing daylight to try and get this thing rebuilt. It took several attempts just to get the right combination of bolts, washers, and locking nuts, but eventually we got it just right. Finally, to put it to the test, we blasted through five cans in a quarter of the time it took before. And as a special treat for all of you who stick around to the end, I figure I'd update you on the progress of our CalExit coin production. So they asked us to make a series of 10 copper coins for them, custom made, and we have the very first one completed here. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty coin. Uh, we have, of course, CalExit on it. We've polished that up, made it look nice. Uh, and then, of course, we have the series 1 out of 10 on there. Uh, to show that this is going to be a limited run that they're doing, that they're calling their friendship series, that we are happy to be producing for them. So we're making these. Uh, we actually tried to make uh, two or three of these this weekend, but we had multiple fail attempts after the first one being perfectly successful. And so we ended up with a lot of junk like this, which is uh, what they call Nordic gold. Uh, it's actually a, an aluminum bronze is what it's called as well. Uh, it's a mixture of aluminum and copper because we accidentally introduced impurities. Uh, we added some 
copper coated aluminum wire that we thought was pure copper into our bunch and messed it up. So we had to go and spend the weekend cleaning out our crucible from this. It was really gross, took a long time, uh, but now we are back to purity standards and are able to continue melting for that. So we're prepping things to get ready for our next attempt there. And I wouldn't say the weekend was all bad because we got a little bit of extra refined copper out of it right here uh, that we can add to the batch later on. And as well, we did a big aluminum melt. And so these are the results of our aluminum haul from this weekend. Uh, we got 12 pretty nice pieces here, um, you know, seven, eight pounds worth. It's gonna go along with this here, which was our first piece that was made by David the blacksmith at uh, one pound sitting right there. And then these gigantic, huge pieces, which we did refine, but we didn't have molds to put them in initially. And so they are these behemoths that unfortunately can't fit in our crucible anymore. Uh, and that's another, you know, uh, five pounds, six pounds, something like that. So you're looking at uh, around 12, 13 pounds here uh, of aluminum. This is a very nice haul for us as our kind of combined collection. Uh, and now we're starting to get some more uh, exotic pieces with this aluminum bronze. Of course, stockpiling our more valuable copper here and then ending up with an actual production run. Uh, that is getting on its way. So as we finish pumping out the rest of these nine and we continue on with our growth of our uh, treasury, I appreciate you guys following along with us, hanging out with us, learning about what we're up to. And if you want to become a customer of ours and actually want to have some coins made for yourself or your micronation, you want to have a cool statue, a bust made of your favorite person from history or even your royal self, uh, or just about anything else you could think of. Uh, we are trying to create more, trying to learn more about the process and get bigger along the way. So thank you guys for hanging out and Eternia forever. Peace guys.